Well, hello, xenographers everywhere, and welcome to another episode. To use your camera to its full potential, it's important to understand how to shoot manually. Whether you're shooting an old film camera that you have to shoot manually, or something much more modern, knowing how to shoot in manual will make you a better photographer. In this video, I'm going to show you how. To make a picture, Every camera needs light, something to focus the light, something to capture the light, and something to adjust the amount of light coming into the camera. And making sure only the exactly right amount of light comes into the camera is called exposure. If too little light comes into the camera, we get underexposure and a dark image. If too much comes in, we get overexposure and an image that's far too bright. And this applies whether you're using film or digital. So how do we adjust the amount of light coming into the camera? Here's how it works and it's the same for all cameras with manual exposure capability. The three elements that govern exposure are shutter speed, aperture and ISO. A shutter is like a door or a gate that opens, lets some light in and closes again. The term shutter speed refers to how long the shutter is open for. A shutter speed of one second means that the shutter is open for one second. A shutter speed of one five hundredth of a second means the shutter is open for one five hundredth of a second. And it's very obvious that the longer the shutter is open, the more light falls onto the film or sensor. Modern shutters tend to have a wider range of shutter speeds, but even older cameras like this Sorky 4, for example, have shutter speeds from one second to one thousandth of a second. A fast shutter speed over about 1 250th of a second will freeze movement and a slow shutter speed will give you blurred motion because the shutter is open for longer. The second way to adjust the amount of light coming into the camera is the aperture. The aperture sits inside the lens and it's adjustable. It can change its size. So the bigger the aperture the more light gets into the camera. Closing the aperture means less light comes in. Also, the bigger the aperture, the more blur you'll get in the background. And the smaller the aperture, the less blur you'll get. Aperture sizes are measured in F numbers. And the larger the number, the smaller the aperture. So F2 is larger than F16. F4 is larger than F8. And so on. Cheaper lenses and older lenses tend to have smaller maximum apertures. This Indostar 22 from the 1950s has a maximum aperture of f3.5 and so does this modern kit lens. This Leica from 1950 has a maximum of f2 as does this Jupiter from 1955. This modern Camlan has a massive aperture of f1.1 and probably the biggest aperture you'll encounter on a lens today is around about f0.95. The third element governing exposure is ISO, but ISO is different to shutter speed and aperture. Shutter speed and aperture both vary the light coming into the camera, but ISO is a measure of how sensitive the film or sensor is to light. The higher the ISO number, the more quickly the film or the sensor reacts to light. So if you're shooting at a high ISO number, 3000 for example, you need less light to enter the camera than if you're shooting at a low ISO number, say ISO 50. On a digital camera, you can change the ISO whenever you want. On a film camera, the ISO rating is baked into the film and it can't be changed. 
the only way to change the ISO of a film camera is to change the film for one with a different ISO rating. These three elements, shutter speed, aperture and ISO, work together to create the right exposure. And changing one of them means you'll need to change at least one of the others to keep exposure correct. But how do we know what's correct in the first place? Well, we need some way of measuring the light, an exposure meter or a light meter of some sort. Most cameras since about the early 70s have had some sort of light meter built in and they're usually visible in the viewfinder. All digital cameras have a meter, but older cameras don't and need an external meter, like this Zorky 4 for example. So let's say we want to take a shot and we want to measure the light. The first thing to do is dial in the ISO setting. You might find it says ASA on your film, but they're the same thing. And then point the meter at the subject. And by the miracle of the selenium cell, the needle moves. Now we line the two needles up and that gives us the correct exposure we can read off on the dial. You can see there isn't just one correct exposure combination, there are several. We could use 1 500th of a second at f4, 1 250th of a second at f5.6, 125th of a second at f8, and so on. All light meters work essentially in the same way, so this iPhone meter has fields for shutter speed, aperture and ISO, so for a given amount of light, there is a range of combinations to choose from. And it's the same with a digital camera. So, how do we know which combination to choose? Well, as a general rule, you should keep the shutter speed at least as high as the focal length of the lens. So if we're using a 50mm lens, our minimum shutter speed should be 1 50th. If we're using a 100mm lens, our minimum speed should be at least 1 hundredth. Generally speaking, you should keep the aperture between f5.6 and f11 because that's usually where the lens is sharpest. Although if you want lots of shallow depth of field or background blur, open up the aperture to its highest value. If you want deep depth of field, that is as much in focus in your shot as possible from foreground to background, use the smallest aperture possible. And if you're using digital, set your ISO as low as possible because higher ISO settings mean more noisy, grainier images. So for this light, we'll select 1 1 2 5th of a second shutter speed. That keeps the speed way over the focal length of the lens, which in this case is 50mm, which gives us an aperture of f8. We don't need too much shallow depth of field in this shot, so we don't need to open up any wider. And there's our shot, all nicely exposed. And we can take the same shot using all the different combinations of exposures, and the amount of light will stay the same, so all the images will be correctly exposed. And you can see how, as we use wider aperture values, the background becomes less and less focused. We're getting less and less depth of field. And at maximum aperture, the background is pretty blurry. So those are the basics of exposure and how to get the right amount of light into a camera to expose your shot accurately. But for now, that's it from me. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I hope it's been of some use. Please do like and subscribe before you go. The more people who subscribe, the easier it is for me to keep making these videos. Thanks to everyone who's subscribed so far. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time for some more Xenography.